Shabbat, oh Lord, as we come, we don't want to just bring songs of beauty on our lips, but Lord, we want to come with our whole heart, our mind, our soul, and everything that's within us, Lord, to surrender unto you, to have your will, Lord. It's your power that tears down the strongholds of the devil, and he does not like the light. Thank God for that, Lord. Let your light so shine today in this service, in the hearts of these, your children, and Lord, help us to glorify you in everything that's said and done. Thank you for the work that you've already gone prepared for us. May we enter into the rest of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Uh, we, we have kind of a topical lesson today. And please uh, excuse me, I'm still fighting a little bit of a cold here. I think I'm good. It's a tickle in my throat more than anything. But, but anyways, it comes and goes. <laughs> but we, I've entitled today's message, Good Stewards of God's Treasure. And it's, a, it's something to understand, this incredible and awesome privilege that we have to be stewards. And what is a steward? The, the, the Greek word that's used in the New Testament is called okinomos. And it means a manager of a household or the household affairs, a manager of a farm or late in the state, an overseer, a superintendent of the city's finances, a treasurer of the city of the treasures or, or uh, questers of a king. So we, we <clears throat> me, <laughs> you're going to see, <clears throat> are, am a steward. And I've been gifted stewardship. And you are stewards. And you've been gifted stewardship. And what this means is it's not ours, but we've been entrusted with what God has given us. Whether it's, you're going to see, the creation of all the earth, whether it's the monies of what God has given you for your provisions, and sustenance, you know, back in the Old Testament, this could be sheep and oxen and animals and things of that nature. But nevertheless, it's still uh, whatever monetary source is used to buy and sell and so forth. Or whether you're a steward of grace, the minister of grace, giving unmerited favor, which has been given unto you. You are a minister of this. You are a steward of this to protect it, to guard it, to nurture it, and to put it forth. And then finally, stewards of the mysteries of God. We've been enlightened and imparted things of God that are beyond what we see with our eyes, hear with our ears, but they're spiritually discerned. And this is the connotation that we are all good stewards of the gospel to get the good news out to the people. We are stewards. An honor, it's a privilege, but it's not ours. It's God's. That's the whole point of stewardship. You've been entrusted something that's of God. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10 says, As every man hath received the gift, so the minister as same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. There it is, that stewardship of God. But we've been gifted with gifts. We've been gifted with talents. We've been gifted with time. We've been gifted with energies to be ministers and manifold, and, and, I'm sorry, sorry, manifold stewards. Hard. Always looking to tend to, to care for, to nurture, to grow. Grace. In every situation, wherever we can, this unmerited favor, giving people um, what they don't necessarily deserve. We're called to be stewards even from the very beginning. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, it says, And God blessed them. And God said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over it the sea, and over the fowls of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Be stewards. Care for everything that I've created for you. But it's him. He owns it all. And yet he's entrusted us to be good stewards of everything. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15 goes on and says, <coughs> and, the Lord, <coughs> sorry, and the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it, or to be a good steward of it. So even before creation, or I'm sorry, before the fall of man, there was a stewardship that was assigned to man. He wanted us to be created in his image, but he also wanted us to tend for those things that were his. To partake in that. To partake in the ministry, or his business. Still, it's God's, it's not ours. Colossians 3, verse 23 says, And for whatever you do, do wholeheartedly unto the Lord and not unto men. It's important as we think of these stewardships and these things, it's God's business. It's not our business. We need to be busy about our Father's business. And in this, you're going to 
do it to God, for God, to please God, and not please men. We're not here to bend and break and, and do what they say or others say around us, necessarily, to care for the things that are God. When we do this, we compromise. We, we share ownership with someone else. When ultimately it's God, why do we tend, why do we give honor to our father and our mother? Well, it's because the Lord has used them as the vessel to bring you into this earth. It was him who gave you your mother and father. It's him who gives you the, the boss that you're working for and we're to give honor to. It's him who puts the president of the United States and every other leader around the country into position, whether evil or not evil. It's him that we bring glory to them and give honor because we're being stewards to come underneath. It's him who puts your pastor over you, whether you like his funny face or not, or big nose. It's him. So you give honor to give honor to God. To help in the stewardship of what's been entrusted to us as a people. We are to be wise investors and stewards. Stewards are not just to <clears throat> dust it off, make it look shiny. I, mean, I see a lot of Bibles, and some of them are too dusty in people's houses. But some of us, every once in a while, will come along with a duster and dust it off and make it look really nice and set it just at the right angle on the table so everyone knows that you're a study or a student of the scriptures. But you're not growing that Bible, are you? You're not letting the seeds of that Bible manifest themselves in you and others around you to bring increase. Remember, subdue and multiply. We're supposed to be investors. We're supposed to take that which God's given us and multiply it. And by the way, don't go kick other people who are multiplying. <laughs> because you're not. Because you're a wicked servant. Amen? We can do that. Well, I'm a steward. Are you really? Or are you coming against the one who's doing the work of the Lord? That'd be worse than dusting and making your Bible look good. You don't like that someone else's is all ragged and used and put into good use. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 says, But this I say unto you, He which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly, he which soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. This is a golden rule. I remember as a kid, I was in a play, my first play, and they thought I sang good, funny, um, but then they made me Johnny Appleseed. In Spencerport, by the way. And I sang Johnny Appleseed. My name is Johnny Appleseed. I come to plant my seeds in thee. I come to plant them in the ground. Soon the blossom for miles around. You know, and whatever other verse I had. I was terrified of that. I couldn't remember it, but I needed to get it out. I was given it. And I thought of Johnny Appleseed. He doesn't sow slowly and, metic and, and descriptively. No, he's so... Um, Bountifully, He threw them everywhere. And where they lie, let them lie. We're going to be investors. Why aren't we moving in faith? We're too busy structuralizing everybody else and limiting where they invest. When we should be worried about moving by faith, because without faith, it's impossible to please God. What's stopping you from sowing? And why are you stopping others from sowing? What limit are you putting on people who've been gifted and been charged to be the stewards of the heavenly ministries of God. Mysteries and ministries. Amen? The gospel. What are we doing? The disciples tried to rebuke someone doing that. And Jesus said, if they're not against us, they're for us. Leave them alone. Leave them alone. You worry about you. It's not just about being faithful with earthly monies and stewardship. It's about heavenly and eternal investment. It's about bringing the increase. Remember, we're here to be partakers in God's business to increase the kingdom of God. To bring more in the multitudes of every tribe, every tongue, every nation. Luke chapter 16, verse 11 says, If therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit and trust you the riches or those riches that are of heaven? So we have this tangible thing that we can see here on this earth where our character and our soul and, and, and entrustment is there. It's seen. It's visual. We see if you don't work, you don't eat. We've been given certain gifts and talents that we're to multiply and tend for. And by the way, I think most women are very, very good at this. They're good at looking at what's needed for the household, going, oh, we're short this, we're short that. And they're constantly stocking the shelves and, 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 and making sure there's toothpaste and toothbrushes and all these little details that you wouldn't even think of. The Lord says, if you're not a good steward in that, then how are you going to be a good steward in those things you don't see that I'm entrusting you, men? 
You partner with the women. You partner together with the church to make sure that the needs that are physical are being met. This is important. This is very important. Because didn't Christ come first and meet the needs of the people physically before he then started imparting unto them spiritual things so that they would receive them? So there's benevolences in this church. The giving of things to meet people where they're at when they have shortcomings. To help them overcome those things. Which, matter of fact, it says we just learned on Thursday to give double honor to the pastor. Give them double income. It literally means money. So that they will not worry about all these other things of tangible fleshly needs. So they can focus on the divvying up, the studying of the scriptures, the prayer for the saints. And they can give out what's of God. Be faithful. Be faithful. But first it says, find one who's faithful in his own home. Not in debt, not bankrupt, not all of a sudden, right? Make sure that they're good stewards with what God's entrusted them with their home. The God gives us this parable, Jesus Christ, of the talents. I'm just going to read through this, but you'll get the idea. I don't need to delve into this so much more, but I think I do want to gloss over it, read over it, do a survey, it's called, kind of quickly read it. It says, Matthew chapter 25, verse 14, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another he gave one, I'm sorry, two, and to another he gave one, every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded the same, and made another five talents. And likewise he who had two, he also gained two. But he that had received one talent digged in the earth, hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord, whose servants cometh, reckoned with them. And so he had received the five talents, came and brought the other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest me under five, and behold, I gained uh, again, besides this, another five talents. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over um, uh, over many things. Enter thou in with joy of the Lord. He also had received the talents, two talents, that came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou in with joy of the Lord, of thy Lord. Then he which received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou was a hard man, reaping there thou hast not sown, where thou hast not sown, gathering where thou hast not strung. And I was afraid, and went and hid the talent of the earth, lo, and there thou hast thine. And the Lord answered and said, in other words, he did nothing with what God gave him. He just had that Bible and buried it so no harm could come to it, and did nothing with it. The Lord was not a tough taskmaster. The Lord is light. He's not here to, to, to bring us um, hard work. He's bringing us something that's easily done through him with the gifts he's given us, but he's asking us to go do something with it. Go be faithful. Don't hold on to the money and do nothing with it. Do something with it. And he did nothing with it. You knew, and he's going to call him out on his own judgment of God. Okay, you knew that I was a tough taskmaster, then why didn't you give me some why didn't you at least put it in the bank where I could earn some interest? Why didn't you do something, anything by faith, trusting that I gave you this for a reason? You did nothing with it. Stewardship is more than just making it look pretty. It's continuing to plant. It's continuing to water. But who brings the increase? God. He will. He will meet us where we're at. But this wicked servant... It, it, the Lord says unto him in verse 29 in that same chapter, Matthew, it says, For unto everyone that hath shall be given, and he that sh <coughs> shall have abundance. But from him that hath not, it shall be taken away, even which he hath. And he cast, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into darkness, and there shall be weeping of teeth and gnashing, uh, I'm sorry, weeping and gnashing of teeth. So you don't, he's being judged to hell. He's being judged to this very tough place. Because you didn't believe in God, because you just were you you were religious and you kept what you had and you were you didn't do what the other people were doing, which was moving by faith, and they weren't so rigid. We don't even know how they made two. We don't know how he made an additional five, but they doubled it. 
That doesn't sound like a lot, right? Remember, he was, long, he was gone for a while. The Lord's gone for a while. So much so that the wicked servant will say, he delayeth his coming, and they'll start to play and marry and do all these horrible things and spend up the monies and the gifts that God's had or leave them on a shelf. And he said, when, at a time when you least expect it, he's coming back. What an honor. What a privilege it is that we've been imparted the gifts of God for the building of the kingdom of God. To be a part of this business, this incredible business of God the Father, to save souls. It's, it's almost, if you think about it, wouldn't you be angry if you knew you had the ability to go into a burning building and save somebody, and you just sat there with all your fire equipment on, and your special hoses, and your special fire retardant spray and foam, and just sat there and watched the people die? And someone equipped you to do this? To go make more? To go save more and more? Keep going? Yeah, risk your life. But work? Be busy? Put out the fire? Do something? Encourage others? Go, Gary! Get in there! You know, At least do something with what you have. Use your mouth. Use your tongue. Use anything. Use your grace to encourage others that are in the battle, that have been called accountable. Amen? Stop challenging your parents. How about getting in and helping your parents? The Lord said that a children was a blessing to the mother, a quiver in the father's arrow. What does it mean? It means you're a benefit. And if you weren't, they took you out back and killed you and made them out. I'm just joking. <laughs> but that's what they were. They were supposed to be a benefit. The more you make, the more you can make. Amen? Now, we learned in Josiah's class that you can invest in a child, don't they? Woo! My, my future pastor, he, he is being invested in so he can grow up and become an investor in other people to make more pastors, more children, more teachers, more evangelists. Investment, right? It's a ministry, and she's there too, I can see it. <laughs> God tests the physical to promote and care for the spiritual. Luke chapter 12, verse 42 through 46 says, And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward who his Lord shall make ruler over the household to give them their portion of meat in due season? The faithful servant of God is always tested first in the things that you cannot see, I mean that you can see, so that you'll understand that they'll be faithful in things you cannot see. It's always a humble spirit Humility, always a teachable spirit and faithful for what you've been taught. Faithful in the spirit of God. Not the rituals, guys. Listen, the Pharisees were that. And they weren't fair, you see, as I teach the children. The Sadducees were that. And they were sad, you see, as I teach the children. Paul was that. Until he became a child first and relearned the spiritual things of God. Then he became a minister of God. Then he became an investor in the kingdom of heaven, rather than a killer of those that we're seeking. Amen? This is what we're, we're We have to have this humble heart. John chapter 3, verse 27 says, John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given from heaven. Whose work is this? God. God's. Whose work are you? God. God's. Whose things have you been given? Who gave you the things you have? God, just because you've been invested in it, you know, I hear people <coughs> bashing, bashing Donald Trump, and I'm not, you know, I'm not here to promote Trump, to put Trump down, nothing. I'm just saying, some say, well, you know, if he took the money his father gave him and invested it, he would be blah, 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 you know, and then people are always judging other people with what they've been given. Who's going to ultimately judge you with what you've been given? God. God. It's his. But you've all been seated. You all have been seated with an incredible body, with an incredible mind, with an incredible purpose here on this earth that couples in to the ministry and the stewardship of God's garden. God has given overseers in the church. It's his order. It's his decision, his design. Men who've been found faithful. Titus chapter 1 verse 7 says, For a bishop must be blameless as a steward of God. Not self-willed or self-desiring his own business. Not about making lucrative money for himself or drawing people's attention to himself for glory, fame, all this other nonsense. 
not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine or drunken, no, not a striker or a violent person, not given to filthy lucre or money, controlled by the gods of this world, in other words. Instead, they're free or overcome those gods of the world, and they live for the God of creation. They're good stewards. Men, the Lord says, in, in, that, in that qualification of a pastor or a bishop. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 says, Let a man so account for us as ministers of Christ and stewards of the ministry of God. We must be smart investors with a vision and a plan. Luke chapter 14, verse 28 says, For which of you intendeth to, be, to build a tower, sitteth down first, and counteth not the cost, or count, and counteth the cost, whether we have sufficient to finish it. We should have men and women working together who have a vision. And the vision is Christ. The vision is eternity. The vision is the kingdom of God. I hate when I hear it. I had someone come in here, and he wanted to come to the church, and I knew him for a while, and he's like, what's your vision? I go, Jesus. That's my vision. Jesus. What do you want me to say? I want to take over Gates, and I want to take over Ogden, and pretty soon, Ebenezer Christ will be in a church with thousands and thousands of people. Yeah, I have a little bit of a vision. I'll tell you, I want to see a cross on top of this building. I want to have this building. But that's scary. What I really care about is that Christ is lifted on high in the hearts and minds of each and every person who's here and each and every person that, that you know. This is the vision I have that Christ would be multiplied and that people would let go of the gods of this world and take hold of the God of eternity and love, unconditionally love, and be these stewards and get busy about their Father's business of grace, of the mysteries of God, and yes, of the finances they have here on this earth to show people they can't see otherwise because they're not spiritually discerning. You're a child of God. <clears throat> this is my goal. This is my vision. It's God's vision. It's not mine. It's not just about surviving, but thriving and counting the work until the Lord comes, continuing in the work until the Lord comes. Our investment is for future, the next generation true. For Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22 says, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children, children, and the wealth of of the sinner is laid up for the just. I'm not satisfied with you. I hate to say that, but I'm not. I'm eternally grateful for each and every one of you. But I want the next generation. I want your friends. I want your family. I want everyone you know and every circle you have to come to the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. I want not just Dante, but Dante's children and Dante's children's children to come to the saving grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. I want liberty not just for this generation, but for every generation from here to come till Jesus comes back in return. I don't know when that will be. Most likely it will be soon. But until then, I'm going to be busy about that business. I'm not satisfied. I'm satisfied with God, but I'm not satisfied with the work that's being done yet. We're not done. It's not over. Last time you are breathing, you're not on the other side yet, right? To live is Christ, to die is gain. We will have that gain. But right now we're Christ on earth. To be busy about his business. This also speaks to lay it all out. Lay it on the line. The Super Bowl is coming up. You got the 49ers. You got the Kansas City. Everyone, blah. But, but guess what? It takes a lot to get there. I'm not trying to compare a sport. Never dare would I because I'm I'm pretty confident God is not an NFL fan. I'll just watch the commercials tonight and the halftime shows and you'll see that's not necessarily God's work. However, the idea of the competition, the idea of running the race according to the rules, the idea of not holding back, this is your opportunity. This is your short opportunity you have to make an impact with everything you have. Are you going to let this opportunity pass? Hold back nothing when it comes to investing or being a good, wise stewardship. 1 Timothy chapter 6, 
Verse 7 says, For we brought nothing into this world, and certainly we can carry nothing out. You might as well use it up. And I don't mean go spend and buy mansions and spend up all your money so there's no inheritance for your children. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying invest everything you have, your heart, most importantly, but your mind, your soul, your spirit. Pour into it. Go the extra mile in this incredible ministry that we've been given. We can't outgive God. He asks us to test him in this. Sometimes we feel like, well, if I do this, then I'll have nothing, and, and they'll have something, and, and blah, blah, blah. You know, and we try to get the government to do it all for everybody else. Like, let them give it. Let every, we always think, let everyone else give it. No, you give it. If you've got to give it, God will give you more. And we're going to go through our finances after this, and you're going to see that, guys. You're going to see. You cannot outgive God. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 says, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that you may meet my house, and prove me wherewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open unto you windows of heaven, and pour unto you blessings, that you shall not have room enough to receive it. He's telling you the way to prosperity, the way to contentment, the way to peace, the way to joy, is to let it all go for the glory of God. Take those talents and throw them out there, and he'll give you more. And more. And more. Unending. It's his ministry. There's no shortage of, of, of supplies in God's ministry. Ever. Use them. The church is where we buy and sell. We come to the church. Some of you don't know this. We come to the church to receive and to buy and to trade those things that we have physically for things spiritually. To be filled afresh with the Holy Spirit of God, be redirected, be acknowledged as we learn today with the Word of God so that we can, as a scalpel, go and cut asunder and become prosperous for God and let that Word go forth. We come here to be filled. We come here to be filled and equipped and stirred up to go out with each other's gifts. We stir each other up. We're encouraged with testimonies. Unfortunately, sometimes the church has become a corrupt, nasty place. I, some people don't come to church because they feel like they get attacked more than they get encouraged. They're being beat up more than they're being lifted up. Amen? This is where you come to sell out and receive from God. From the word, from the preaching, from the fellowship, from the communion together as a body. And we get out to get busy together. Matthew chapter 25, verse 8 through 9 says, And the foolish said to the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, No, not so, lest there not be enough for us and you. But you, rather, to them, go sell and buy for yourselves. In other words, you're talking about the virgins when Jesus comes. It's too late then to not have the fellowship, to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's too late for them to light and ignite and to be a light for Christ and doing the work of Christ. It's too late. Not for you. You're here. You're being filled. You're being charged. You're being equipped. Now let's be busy about his business so when he comes back, we're found ready. Working. Keep going. This is incredible. You have an incredible opportunity here. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 20 says, There is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise but a foolish man spends it up. When we come together with other like-minded people who are moving in the wisdom of God, we will learn where to invest. We will learn to get on board with the vision of that place. How much work can be done with one person? Well, so much more when the body comes together. It multiplies. When we work two, this Jesus sent them out two by two. Not alone. But he sent out many, Right? First the 12, then 70. He sent out many, again and again, together, were the body. Together. This is why Satan wants to divide. And the, Jesus says that a house divided cannot stand. I praise God. We, he roots out a lot of times those that sow division or discord, as it says in Proverbs chapter 6, which he hates in this body. We are a body of encouragers. 
We are a body of builders. We are a body of using the gifts to help others. We're not trying to puff ourselves up and be seen. I wouldn't ask Josiah to come up here and teach if I felt that was his desire in his heart. No way. I know his desire. He's a man that's been found faithful. He's a man who's done everything I've asked him as a pastor. And humbly, of course, he's, he's a man. But he's faithful in what he's been given. And I don't mean to isolate just Josiah. I just, the Lord says, set those that are doing the example. There's many in this church. Many of you. I'm watching you. I see you. If I see you in the flesh, certainly God sees you more so in the spirit. Keep going. Keep going. Let's continue to seek God's wisdom with God's talents and use them freely but wisely in faith. God desires to bless us. We're going to close with this scripture verse. Before we then, like I said, we'll pray, close out the service, and then what we'll do is anyone who's on Zoom who's not an official member of the church, we'll, we'll take them off. I apologize. But we're going to go into our house's business. The Lord's business, but the personal business of our personal finances and for the safety of each and every person here. If you're part of the church, you're more than welcome to stay to go through those finances because we're literally, completely, and utterly transparent in all of our finances. And I have every account of the entire bank account for any of those that want to see it. Not to judge, <laughs> not to tear apart, but to see the incredible work that the Lord's doing in and through us. Amen? Through faithful men and women. So with this scripture verse, I want to leave you. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end or to prosper you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, Lord, I thank you for the incredible gifts you've given us, the incredible opportunity to be able to work in the ministries that you've called us to. Help us, Lord, to, to see the ministry and the simplicity of the things around us. So many of us want to save the world, but we're not even saving our, our coworker or our neighbors or people that are right around us. I just pray, Father, that you help us to sow um, with, with, without, any, without abandonment, Lord, with, to continue to sow everywhere, wherever you have us, Lord God. And Lord, help us to build those relationships, that we could uh, meet people where they're at, physically first, that then they would receive you spiritually. Give us the wisdom, Lord. This is your work. We're your vessels. Help us to be a part of it. Pour out your spirit upon each and every one of us, the overflowing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm going to go ahead and close off the YouTube.